Welcome back to PJ Chen Design. This is PJ. Today I would like to share with you how to make this 3D model for this skeleton key. And it can be a pendant or be a charm for you. Are you ready? Let's get started. Before we start in this skeleton key project, I would like to point out certain things right here. First, it's hard to build in the regular Rhino to having this like a crease surface on the top. As you can see on my render view, it's a bit sharper, but still really rounded on the body. So that's a, one of the things I would like to discuss here. And rest of it, it can be done with the sub D or the regular Rhino nerve. And this could be a pendant once you put the chain and uh, jumping on. Let's starting from the scratch. To save some time, I already traced some design. You can do whatever design that you want. Basically, you can use in the curve and then you can kind of trace it and do the uh, control point edit. But one thing that I would like to mention here for the sub D, for you to prepare to work on your sub D, is all the point, the end point into touching the end point, like this one, this touching this one and both of the end point need to touch with this line you do not want it to see something like for example like this like almost touching but not touching uh, that will create a little bit extra work in the sub D another thing that I will want to mention on this where it's connected as you can see this curve is touching with this curve but one thing that you don't want it to happen is you you have this point go really taper down something look like something look like this or having it coming down really narrow on the curve itself it doesn't have the problem but once you're turning into the sub d creating the thickness this will be a very major issue for the surface stick together or overlapping together so this is one of the things that we wanted to keep in mind when we turn them into the surface and of course you can continue to edit right now or you can edit once you're turning into the sub the surface. I personally like to work on my curve while they are really easy editable, which is in, in the curve uh, status. All right, so make sure everything is touching. This part you could touch or not touching. In this case, I don't want to touch in this because I do want it to curve it back by itself, as actually I do not want them to touch there. All right, but if the end point, make sure it's touching the end point. All right, so once you have done your design, let's go ahead to use the sub D tool. Uh, the sub D tool living in the Rhino 7 only. If you are using an older version, you can try to download the T-spline and see if you can still find them from Autodesk. All right, so under the sub D tool, you can go to the top menu. You have all the sub D here, or you can turn on what's new in the Rhino 7, and then you should see the sub D, or you can come into this tab, tab right here. You have a sub D tool. And what I did is I pulled down the sub D tool and I tag here and that was one of the things you can do on your toolbar lay out there okay so once you go to the sub d tool this one is called uh, create sub d multi pipe this is one of my favorite tool in the sub d because it create a lot of things that uh, right on there will take multiple steps to get it so you select everybody and you hit enter and in my case i want a radius right here for 0.7 it depends on the size you have you can have any size that you want and hit enter there now the cap end i want to make sure it is on so it will be nice and rounded and for the smoothness if you go zero that will be smooth if you go one that will be rougher and the big largest number you can choose is one so we want to stay with the zero all right, once you have everything, you hit enter, and this is what you get, right? Now, you can see that if you see on my perspective view, and you see something like this in the render, you can see they connected really, really well, all right? I want to do a comparison by copy all of this and curve on the side, and I just want to use a regular Rhino uh, pipe 
instead of uh, sub D. Uh, we're gonna use the same radius for, for 0.7, hit enter. And then this is what we get. If you see uh, my render view, you're going to see it's kind of a, you should see those line when they touch in and um, to the other line and which I don't like it. I want it to be really smooth, right? I just need to have a top has a little bit peak there. And let me show you what I mean. Now, if you are on the sub D, then you have the sub D tool. You do have a choice to pick up the age or the uh, faces or the vertex. And I have a course to show you very from very basic to using a sub D. If you are interested in that course, I will have on the right top corner for the link to the course for your reference. All right, so what I'd like to do now is I want to use this uh, selecting H loop, or you can selecting H one by one. And basically, I'm going to pick up this loop here going to pick up this loop and whatever is on the top, right? So I'm going to pick up those and pick up this one, or I pick up the wrong one, this one, and every single things on the top right there. Okay. And then um, for this, I'm going to hit enter. So it will select everything on the top on that age. And I'm going to come in over here. You have expand age. All right. If you click on the expanded age, you have offset the age you just pick and then you can pick on the small, medium and large. I want to choose the small because I just want to have a little peak there. All right. You can choose the style for double, which it will create two line or two edges on the edge that you pick, or you can pick a single one. You can see it, the one in the middle is just disappear. Right. So I like to have the double. All right. So now I have something like this. If you take a look on the render view, you can see really quickly it created a very nice peak on the top and that will take a really long time to build the Rhino one by one if that is the case. And I just realized it has a little kink there and that's because I don't have enough faces. So what I wanted to do is I'm just going to modify by pick up certain vertex and just bring it back like this or pick up these faces, pick up these faces and move it more closer. So it doesn't feel like it has, you know, weird kink there. So I kind of go back and forth to pick up the vertex and pick up right here and adjust until you find the one that you like. All right. So I'm not going to spend too much time here. I want to show you something more in this video. All right. Once you like it, and everything is look all right to you, we need to have it this mirror to the other side, right? Uh, but what we wanted to do in the sub D instead of using the mirror, we wanted something called reflect. This green line right here is the center line. One of the key that you wanted to make sure is you wanted to make sure it passed the center line, right? Before we do the, any of the reflex. So I'm just going to simply extrude this one and move it down a little bit for it to pass that line. And I'm going to pick up this curve, uh, this faces, sorry. And then I wanted to make sure that you pass that center line. All right. So once you have that, let's take a look on the top view and I'm going to delete this one. Uh, that was for the comparison. All right. Now we have this sub D surface. We want to use the command for reflect sub D object. It's going to ask you which uh, way that you want to reflex. Uh, you can choose on the X or Y. In this case, we want to pick up the Y axis and then you will see the arrow right there. That means this is going to be mirror to the other side at the same time in the sub D we call reflex. So let's hit enter and then you will see this is coming out on the other way. And what is good on this is anything that you are moving on this size. For example, I'm going to pick up these faces and I simply just going to move it close. As you can see, the other side is well move as well. All right. So this is a, a good part, of, uh, not just a mirror to the other side. It has a history recorded more like you're using the mirror plus the history. OK, so everything you move on the right side will move on the other side. All right, cool. Now let's take a look on the rest of it. The rest of it, it could be any of the decoration right there. So I'm still going to use the sub D and I'm going to coming over here that you have the sub D trunket cone. And I'm going to come in here anywhere and create a small element, something look like this. 
right there. All right, and then if you can make them bigger, smaller, fatter, whichever way that work for you. And first things first, let's uh, make sure it's right in the center. So align vertical centers right here, and I'm just going to type it zero, and then that will be there. And I'm going to move this guy going toward to the top. I look like it's a little bit too long. So maybe make it a bit shorter. All right. You can also, um, while this is a sub D and then you can pick up the faces, make them, make them taller, or you can pick up the edges coming down. So it will be rounder. So you can do a lot of things with this. All right. So once you do it and we wanted to make them into the shape that we like, I'm going to pick up the whole thing and I'm, let's go ahead to using the polar array and we're going to snapping into right in the middle and we want to, let me guess 12 of them. Okay, so you look fine with the 12 of them and then you can change them if you like to. And then I'm simply just going to group them first because I might need to change them later, but let me group them first and move them to where they're supposed to be. So that will be one of the element right there. Let's take a look on the render view and see if that fit into our design. All right, so it will look nice and I'm gonna just making a copy to the top to fill up that space and make them a bit smaller. Something look like this. All right. So now the top part is finished and you can also have another bar there so you can hook on the jump ring and it will become a pendant. Now let's do the bottom design. On my original design, you can see that we have this bar all the way to the bottom, right? And then you can have an image to trace and I'm just going to make us something really quick. Starting from the design inside of this flower shape right here, we're going to come out a straight line and then you can do whatever design that you wanted to have. Uh, something look like this. It can go straight coming down here and go another one. Or you can use a bunch of a curve and just um, doing a um, bunch of the trimming and join. But this is the part it's really important at the end. At the end, you want this guy to be in the center, right? Um, so the easy ways to do it is you draw anything past that center. So that's say I'm going to draw something look like this past the center. And then I'm going to pick up at the very last point. And I'm going to use the uh, align object. And once I align, I want to align to the center. And I simply just going to type it zero. And I will bring it into my axis there. All right. So again, I'm way too simplified this process. But once you have this curve, what you can do is coming into the surface and then you have revolve. So we want to use this curve as a profile. And let's go ahead to snapping into the endpoint, holding my shift. And then we want to do 360 degree. So we'll get something like this, right? And now I'm looking at this, my sub D part might be too thin. So I'm just going to be 1D scale to make sure that cover the post that I'm just making. All right. So for the key part underneath here, we can simply just draw a rectangle, something look like this. And I'm going to draw another one on the top like this and then moving this another one on the bottom and it's up to you how you're going to create uh, this. You can have really complicated pattern if that work for you, but this pretty much will work for me in this way. So I'm going to uh, using the trim command, I'm going to trim it off here, trim it off here, trim it off this one and this one. So I have the shape. Let's go ahead to uh, join it. Right. I also like to give it them a little bit fillet. So I'm going to fillet all the corners at once and that's fitted for point two there. All right. So that look nice. And once you have that, um, let's go ahead to make them into the solid by using the solid extruded planar curve straight. And we can make it into any of the size that we want, right? Now take a look on the render view. They are pretty harsh on the edges. So I'm going to use the fillet edges and let's go ahead to fill it something for 0.15 millimeter and we'll get something like this. 
All right. Now, if this is too big or too thick, you can still scale it down. If that is fine, we are just going to move into whatever they supposed to be. And they will be something like this. I also need another one. Let me hiding this curve. And we want to go to mirror to the other side, something like this, moving in a little bit. And you can, again, you can create whatever pattern for this part. So this will be the skeleton key and you can put in again for the pendant design or for some other small charm if that were for you. If you like the way I model, I do have a membership program and that's showing a lot of my tip and trick for you to learn. Currently have over 170 video in there and you can watch all of them. Join the membership and I hope to see you there. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next.